Okay, I'm going to get started by just um, beginning actually in our 2D electrical package. I'm going to create a, a quick project to design the electrical uh, schematics, put the wiring in, assign the part numbers, and then into the 3D panel. So I'll be as quick as I can in the 2D area. I'm going to go to File New and create a new project. So I'll give it a name. I'll choose a template. And this just gives me a set of title blocks and information that I can put in there about this particular project. This title block or this uh, template already has a cover sheet in there just giving an overview of the information. And I can now right click on the circuit diagram and start adding some pages. So I'm just going to put this very basic incoming power and motors. I am going to make lots of spelling mistakes. There we go. So we're doing this live, so there's no pre recorded stuff in here, so it will go wrong, I'm sure. I'm going to just go into a circuit and just bring in a predefined set of circuits. So this has just been drawn once, part numbers, wire numbers, everything attached, and then dragged onto the folder to make it so that it's quick and easy to then select each type of circuit to piece it together. I'm going to click cancel to accept all of the information on there. Um, and just to be aware that this is a separate device on here and I can double click and I can see it already has parts information assigned on there. So I'm just going to build up the schematic from these sectional pieces of circuit. Some of these have referencing between them. So there's referencing between the contactors and the coils. This navigation is available on the advanced level of C Electrical. There are three levels of basic, standard and advanced. And most of this can be done in the middle, the standard level. But I'll just tell you if any of those functions are available only on the advanced level. It's going to right click and add a new page. I'll put a variable speed drive in here. So I'll just put that as variable frequency or speed drive. And I'll put an inverter here. Pressing the space bar just to allow me to put the insertion point of zero, zero on those. And then one more page. Let's keep it very quick and simple. I'll put a safety really on here. And again, space bar and just place that in as zero, zero. And again, we've got referencing on here. If we've got the advanced level, I can double click and it takes me back to this contactor on the previous page to show me that information. Um, within C Electrical, the wiring information is important because that's then going to feed through to the 3D panel. So in here, we've got the size, the color, and we've got, in fact, the net name here. This is a, a name for a whole group of wires that has certain potential. So for instance, here, P03 is the net name for this um, signal, which is connecting between three different devices. Uh, within the 3D panel, we can actually optimize the order in which these are connected. So rather than connecting from each push button back to a contactor, these might be on the door and this contactor might be on the gear plate, we can optimize it to make sure that the wiring connects between the push buttons first, and then there's only one wire down to this device in the background. I'm just gonna go back into the wire numbering. In the standard and advanced level, we have the functionality to just delete all wire numbers, and they're all gone, and then we can go back and say, right, I want to generate the wire numbers, reset the wire size and color if necessary, and we can see we've got all that information in there for the size, color, of each of these wires. So that's as much as I want to do in the 2D. I'm going to then click on save. We don't have to, but I'm going to right click on the 3D panel and add a 3D panel page. Now our 3D panel package um, can either be purchased as an add-on to C Electrical as a separate module um, or as a separate package for the standalone. So it works with either a spreadsheet or with C Electrical as its input for that information. So as we go into the 3D, we get to choose a template and that could have settings already applied to it. It's a different environment, the 3D um, designer. So it allows us to obviously work in three dimensions. Um, it does benefit from a computer that has a separate 3D graphics card. It doesn't have to be anything special. I've just got a standard off the shelf Dell laptop here. Um, so anything really with a dedicated graphics card, you'll see the performance improve on this. So we have a couple of different panels here. So 
if I just work through a couple of these just to point out what they are, we have one here for components where we can say, I want to load from an area of the project. Now I haven't really used these functional areas, function locations. So if I just choose an empty top level, it brings in all the components that we selected on the drawing. So this is every component. And in fact, in doing that, we've also got all of the nets, all of the wiring information. Now these aren't connected yet because the software hasn't worked out the optimum routing. So here, if I click on that P03, I can see these extremities are connected at that potential, but it hasn't given me any wires yet because I haven't placed them, it hasn't optimized those. To bring one of the symbols into the 3D environment, I click on the used option and I can see it appears on my cursor. I'm just using a standard mouse here. It is very difficult to do this just using a trackpad, but using a mouse, you can use the wheel to zoom in, click on the mouse and you can rotate it. And then holding control allows you to pan as well. So just using very basic commands, you can work your way around the 3D environment and you can click and place, or if I decide I don't want it there, I can hit delete to remove it and it goes back into my list. We then have a list of planes. So in 3D, it's really important to tell the software what um, Z plane, what depth we're actually placing things onto. So we use planes quite a lot, either um, planes on their own or mounted to a particular component so that we can attach something either to a gear plate or a door or a side panel. We then have a panel for separate symbols. And we've got lots of databases of 3D symbols that we can uh, make use of and download from IGXO, which we create. Uh, for electrical items, this is important because it's not just a 3D image, it's also information as to where the connection points are wired to. I'm just gonna go down to Schneider Electric, in fact, to a separate one for their universal enclosures, and I'm just gonna place an enclosure onto the drawing. So I'm gonna go to a zoom out a bit, and I'm gonna go to a spatial steel floor, spatial SF, and I'm gonna pick one without a mounting plate to start with. It's 1200 by 600, then 400 deep. So I'm gonna click on that, and I should see that it appears on my cursor. And it's an assembly, so it's a group of items which when you purchase this, it comes as a kit. So when I click on the door, I can see that highlights, and the same thing with the roof. And each one of these can be moved on its own. If I double click on that door, I can move it off and place it somewhere else. So although I've placed it as one element, I could pick and place it. And as I move around, I can see that this has what we call mounting planes, which allow us to quickly move over an area and not very exact. We just click over that area and it snaps into position. Very easy to put these uh, devices together. Um, if I go back into the symbols and I want to put some side panels on here, so I'm going to go to accessories and I want some side panels. And in fact, that first one, 400 deep, hopefully that's the right size. And if I move my cursor over that side area, I can click and place. Now that's actually a kit of two side panels. So I can see I've got one that's mounted and this one here on the outside, I just need to double click twist it round and drop it on the other side. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, I'm gonna put a plinth on here so it's got something to stand on. So I'm gonna scroll down a bit and see if I can find, there's lots and lots of elements in here. Front plinth, this is 600 wide and I want it to be just 100 deep. So I'm gonna choose this one here. And again, it's a kit of front and back plinth. So I'm gonna double click on the second one I just notice how it twists around when I get to the right place. And then I want 100 by 400 side. Just takes a while to find those sometimes. And I'm just gonna drop that on there and place it in. And again, double click on the additional one, swivel it around. And I should just be able to drop it on there. Now I need to work inside the panel really. So I'm gonna click on the door and I'm gonna to go to another of the panels on here, which is on the bottom right for Explorer. This allows me to show the structure of the objects on the drawing. So here I've got an outer frame and anything I click on gets highlighted in this structure. So I can see here, this is the door. And in fact, I've got the option of a light bulb, which allows me to turn that off so I can now see inside the panel. Now this doesn't have a mounting plate, so I've now got an empty, chassis. So what I'm going to do is go back to symbols all the way up 
and I'm going to go to this time common accessories mounting plates I'm going to go for a steel mounting plate and it's 1200 by 600 I think that's the right size I'm going to go for that one I'm holding it in the bottom left and again notice we've got these mounting planes and it highlights in the bottom left so the nice blue strip so I can click on there but then we've got some separate options which are snap points this can be mounted right at the back so zero or as I come forwards I can see it moving forwards in 25 millimeter grid points so it snaps at a particular point and I click to just place that in there if I click on it I could reposition it just by double clicking in fact and I could say actually I want it to be right at the back by clicking there so I've now got a gear plate I can put some of the electrical elements onto there I can mount them if I click on the the back plate what I need to do is tell the software that I'm actually going to be putting something onto there and to do that it's very simple in the Explorer I can see that this mounting plate has two possibilities one on the outside and one on the inside the back of the mounting plate so if I brought it forwards I could have some elements on the back of it all I do is right click on the surface I want to use set that as the working plane and I can now go back to my list of components and I could start placing those in so I have a drive I could click on it and say I want that to be inserted there lots of the uh, electrical devices are also um, rail mounted so I'm going to go into one of the ribbons we haven't really looked at these yet the ribbons allow us to change the view types so we can have it as hidden lines or rendered or shaded at the moment this is rendered but I can switch it and say that I want this hidden lines and I could change the way in which I view this but in fact I've got a separate graphics card it seems to handle it fine so I'm going to put it back as shaded <coughs> excuse me under assembly we have the uh, options here for creating new symbols for creating relationships between devices creating drill contours for drill templates under draw we have some standard 3d drawing functions so we can draw elements and extrude them we can draw cylinders boxes cones spheres and so on and we can sweep and revolve those images to create nice uh, different shapes so we can design things in a C electrical 3d panel plus but um, it's really best designed for bringing in models that someone else has perhaps already created it's much quicker at uh, adding the intelligence we have dimensions modification of objects and under cabinet we've got some other elements which we can add to this so I'm going to go down to pre predefined rails click on a DIN rail and it appears on my cursor so I'm just going to drop that down towards the top and it's got a nice little handle on the right where I can click and I can change the length of that now if I want it a certain length I can hit the space bar I'm going to come to that question in a short while so I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to type in uh, that I want that to be 400 so I can see that that's typed in when I right click I've got another piece exactly the same length on there now I could just place that in I can see these object snaps here which are giving me the end and the midpoint of the back plate of the component above or the device below so it's very easy to line things up uh, I can also click on this device and double click and if I want that to be central if it wasn't central on the panel before I can move it and centralize it so I can position it I can also click on the device right click and say I want a number of copies in the X or Y direction so in the same plane I'm going to choose n copy in the Y direction I want to say 150 millimeters and I want three of those now in fact if I put 150 I'm going to go up the page that's the positive direction I want it to be minus 150 and then click OK and I can see I've got those placed on there I'm going to double click just move this drive down a bit I'm going to put it there and actually just delete this one I don't need that one each of the devices what we've got in there does have a um, the possibility of a drill template so on any of the devices I can click right click and say show me the drill holes and here I can see drill holes where it's going to appear on the back plate and just to check that on the devices I can click on the back plate right click and say show me how this would look if I was sending it out to a Perforex machine to drill this and I can see the output it shows me the outline of all the components and the drill holes that it's going to add to these this can be sent out to DXF and each of the color of those indicates whether it's a, 
a threaded screw, just a hole, or whether it's a cutout. I'm going to go back to my list of components now that I've got some DIN rail. I'm going to place in a safety relay. Now, as I move it across onto the DIN rail, I can click and it snaps into position. So, devices that we create have mating um, blocks on them, which allow them to line up with whatever's close by that it could be mounted on. So, this has found a DIN rail. If I click on the DIN rail, I can see it's actually related to it already. And in fact, in the Explorer, when I click on this device here, I can see it highlighted in the list down here, and I can see that this is a, effectively a child of it. It's on the DIN rail. I'm going to go back, select the DIN rail itself, and we've got some motors here. I'm not going to place those, but I'm going to click on this device and then the next one. Now, this one has an assembly. I'm going to click on it and just show you placing that. This one has an auxiliary contact block which we can just mount by tapping K when we've got it on the drawing. And you can see it just snap into position. So we can have assemblies of devices which join together. I can leave a gap or I can select the, uh, the rail in the background and then I can say that I want this aligned with a 20 millimeter gap. So now when I click on this next one, I've got a 20 millimeter gap on there. Or later on, I could select the DIN rail itself use the rail tools and organize them all left. So there's lots of options there to say how you want to space these out. Just by selecting the DIN rail and choosing a group of objects means that when you click on insert, they just get placed onto the selected DIN rail with whatever spacing you have on there. I'm just going to go down to the next group and I'm going to put some terminals on here. I'm going to insert the entire assembly. So I have a terminal strip called X1. When I click on yes, I can see it's possible to then place the whole group of terminals on there. And I'm going to do the same thing with this next one. Place that on, and there's an extra terminal there. I could have placed these all at once. You can place additional symbols in here just by putting the symbols in. So I could choose a separator or an end plate in there. Um, for now, I'm just going to go back to this list. And I've got a power supply down here, which I haven't selected. So I'm going to click on that. And as it's on my cursor, I can use the Z key to rotate about the Z axis. So I can ro rotate it and have it in a different orientation if I want to. So I could have it facing downwards towards my terminals. So I've got quite a lot of space on here, um, but I've placed most of the components that would go on the back plate. I've got some push buttons and some motors which would perhaps be placed outside of the panel. So just to check how these are connected together, I can move down to the nets, right click, and route all of the nets. It warns me everything has to be visible if it's going to be routed. So I'll say, yes, it's all visible. And I can see a bit of a rat's nest there. It's all wired, but there's no wiring channels on there. I've forgotten to put those on. So let me just go to a front view. In the predefined channels, I'm going to pick some wireways. I'm going to choose 25 by 50 in this case. And I get piece of wire way which I can put on there. Um, I'm just going to hit Z and just put that going down the side first. And just use the handle just to pull that up so I can snap it towards the top. Put another one on the right hand side. And then when I right click, I'm going to hit Z again, just so I can put that going across from the left hand side. And again, change the length so it joins up nicely with the uh, section above. It's going to zoom in a bit because I'm snapping on quite a big grid. And you do have on the bottom left a chance of changing that grid. At the moment, it's on 25 millimeters. And you can make it smaller if you want to. But zooming in often gives you enough control to avoid having to do that. There we go. Uh, now, once I've put the wireways on, I can check to see if they're all joined together. And if I click on show connected channels, it shows any that are connected together. So that's quite useful. But it also allows me with them all selected to change their transparency. I'm just going to move my tools. Can I move my tools? No, it's been blocked by 
a conferencing tool. If I just put that as being 45%, I can see that this is now transparent. So any devices in the drawing can be made transparent. But now if I right click over the wires, I can reroute all of the wires or nets and it should reroute all the nets. And I can see these now following the wireways, the cableways that are available there. On each of these, I can click on the wireway and I can select information to show a side view. And these wireways have a reserved area, which you can see from the top. This is maybe 20% spare. And as I drag this cursor across, I can see at each particular point in that wireway, and you can see this blue bar moving across in the background, it tells me what wires are going through at that particular point and how much space is still left in there. So if you've overpacked one of those wireways, it will show up on here and you can do an overall check to check if there is an overload. But on here, you've got a, a detailed view as to what wires are going via those wireways. If I move a component, so if I, let me just double click on that. If I move a component, for instance, from the top, if I double click and drop it down here, I can see the wires automatically route and, and I can perhaps reduce the uh, number of wires going in a particular wireway by doing that. I can also select a, an individual wire and I can see it highlighted in the background. Just zoom out a bit so I can see that. Um, and I can right click and choose a different routing path. So I can say change that routing path. I don't want it to go that way. I want it to go that way instead. And you can see the difference in length for each of these that it uh, then gives. So lots of alternatives on that one. If you choose one, you can click on select path and you can also lock it so that when you auto route again, it keeps that route selected. Um, I've got some components I'm gonna put on the door as well. So what I'm gonna do, these push buttons, I'm gonna go down to here, just minimize the main panel. And here I can see actually the door is turned off. I'm gonna turn it back on. So again, we have two different place uh, surfaces. We can click it, uh, place objects on the outside or the inside. So on this one, I'm gonna put them on the outside, set the working plane. I'm gonna go back to components and I'm gonna place some push buttons. So I'm working on this outer surface. The snap points that I'm getting here are just on the outer surface. So I can click to place this right in the center and I can put the rest of the symbols. If I go to a front view, I could move over the top of this so it's lined up and then hit the tab. And I can say, I want it a certain distance in the X or the Y direction from here. So I can say, I want it 100 millimeters across in the X direction and zero in the Y. So you can be very exact about how you position things. I could do the same thing on this. Hit the tab, minus 100, zero in the Y. So you can position exactly where you want to and know that it's in the center of the panel or it's uh, exactly where you want it to be. <coughs> As I'm placing these down, if I select that, that uh, mechanical, uh, that the door, I can right click and then say, show me the drill template for that. And again, I can see in the middle the outline of the component and the drill hole that's going to be used to mount these. So these symbols have been set up with a drill template, which is just the correct size hole, which then uh, is shown onto that component. Um, if I turn off the display of the door, and in fact, I can turn off on the bottom left, turn off the display of the grid as well, so I can see through that without it obscuring it. I can see these items in midair, they're mounted on the door. And if I right click, reroute all of the nets, it has routed these wire, these uh, push buttons, most of them, um, but it's gone straight from the back plate. So I'm not gonna be able to open that door. So what I could do is perhaps put a routing on there to actually allow that to be routed around the side. So I have the hinges on the right, I could do this using define the route path. So when I click on that, I can choose a point that I want to leave the cable way. I'm gonna choose down here, and just tap T. So it's a midpoint and go between this point and this point. So that's my starting position. I'm just gonna drag this. I could use snap points, but I'm just gonna drag it to the side 
I'm then going to use these views on the top, switch to a right hand view, and I'm going to say I go along the side of the panel back to a front view. I'm then going to route it across and down, and then allow routing. It's going to right click at that point. I've got one section. I'm going to add another one here just by going to define route path from there. And I want this to be level with this point here. So I'm using the snap points just to snap that. And again, I can select one of these pieces and say show connected channels. And again, it should highlight all of the routes that can be taken for any of the wires. So now this time when I right click, Root all wires again, click on yes. And I've now got that information shown on there. So it's routing it correctly around the side. Uh, I could put cableways on the back of the door. Um, there's lots of different cables. I've only used these basic ones, by the way. I could have gone into a list of symbols and said, I want to use ones perhaps from beta duct. So I could use closed slot. 25 by 50, for instance, and I could then place that on the back of the door or place that on the, the, the back and actually stretch that to whatever size I want. And you see these symbols are parametric, so they snap into the right position. So I could have used fancier elements on there for routing the cables, but I've just used a, a very basic tool there just to get this uh, put together using this, the standards. Um, so with that information, we can check that wiring in the report. So we can go to File, under Print, and we can say Print a Report. And I can choose, for instance, the wire routing. So this formats a nice report, which gives us a list of all the wire numbers that are in there, what they connect from and to. So this is just the component name and its connection point. The route. So each of these is the name of one of those cableways. And if it travels via several of them, you can see them separated by a comma, then the size, color, and then the length in millimeters of each of those wires. Just to be aware, when we look at the length in the wiring information, there is a settings box. We access it on the bottom right of the panel, and we can just drag this back a bit. We can add a percentage of extra wire to every wire so if it's a certain length you can say add an extra 10 percent or you can say on every wire add another 15 millimeters also be aware that each component when we click on one has its own properties with a list of all the connection points if i click on this one i can see a red dot and it says this has an extra length of 14 millimeters already so we've already accounted for the fact that it needs to have a certain amount of wire stripped back to go into that screw termination and we can decide when we create a symbol and our content team generally do this but you can decide what type of connector it is so that you get the right wiring information at the end of it you can also limit the number of wires that can be connected at that point we can go into just listing the wires at the bottom by right clicking and going into wires mode and this lists all the individual wires with their length size outer diameter, color, and a signal name, and so on. And if we wanted to send that out to a cutting machine, we can right click and choose export wires for machining. And I can send that out just as a separate file, maybe onto my desktop, I'll just call that wires. And it saves it as a CSV file. Now there is a mapping which allows us to put additional instructions for each type of wire, the size, the color. Um, but at the moment I haven't put any mapping on here, so it's just warning me that there's no additional instructions on there. But I can see down here, hopefully somewhere, that I have a CSV file which has just got that information. It's opened on my other screen, there we go. Um, and so we've got information in there. Because it's a CSV file and we've got things like minus and equals in front of these, Excel isn't very good at opening this. I should have opened it as a as text cells first, so it didn't do this, but it's interpreted some of these. But you can see all that detailed wiring information available. Uh, 
uh, back in the 3D environment, I can also send this out to a separate module called the shop floor module. Now, this is an exact copy of this environment, but it's read only and it allows you to work through each of the wires, highlight them and then confirm, validate when they've actually been wired. So this is something you could put on a touch screen on the shop floor and allow the engineers to look at this digitally and record where they are in the process and follow the exact routing that you've suggested by using this, this software. So if we go to file, save as panel shop floor drawing. And again, I'm gonna put this on the desktop so I can find it. Let's call it webinar and I'm gonna click on save. So that's very quick. I can close that down, save any changes. Now, say electrical is still running, so I still have that. I'm going to minimize it for the moment and start this panel shop floor module. So this is completely separate. It has a separate license. Now, it is actually uh, a rental product, so you would pay for it on a, a yearly basis. It's not particularly expensive, but um, it does allow you to then open up the models. So this is on my desktop. I'm going to choose the one we just sent out. And the environment is almost exactly the same, but we have a few less elements or panels to it. We have an explorer where we can turn things on and off, so we can turn the door on and off if we need to. Um, we can also select individual elements on there. Now it starts off in a kind of grayed out fashion. It's called ghosted, so on the top, if I click on grayed out, I can turn it back onto normal. Now the reason it's in that format is that if I click on a component, I can highlight a list of the wires and say, right, show me everything that's connected to this power supply. And I've got a separate panel for wires where I can say, right, show me this first wire. And not only does it highlight it, it also indicates what wire, what connection point it's going to be taking. So there's a very short one there. I can say, yeah, that's been done now. I've mounted it. It tells me the size, the color, the signal name, and the length and the route that it takes. So I'm going to click on mounted it's then automatically moved to the next one i've got the live coming in connecting to this breaker to connection point number one so very easy to follow simple click to say where you are at the end of the day you can leave this come back and you know exactly what's been done and what hasn't been done so it allows interruption or sharing of a job and it also verifies that the the, um, the wiring method is consistent that they've taken a consistent route which is exactly what's documented. Um, we could also filter specifically on the wires. So on the right hand side, I can remove the filtering and say, I'm actually going to filter by color. So I've got a, a reel of black cable perhaps. So I'm going to click on the filter options and say, I've got black cable. And as I look down, I've got a couple of different sizes. I've got 2.5 and I've got 1.5 in there. So I'm going to also say I've just got 1.5 cable with me at the moment. So I'm going to choose that one. So now I've just got, and I can see at the bottom, black 1.5. I'm going to go up to the top of the list and I'm going to say, show me the first one. So I can now zoom out, see where it is. These are mounted already. And in fact, on the main toolbar, it should be a question of mounting the mechanical elements first by saying, yes, I've done the framework. I've done the roof, I've done the panel. So each of these has a verification as well. So back on here, we would then go through each of the wires at this particular point, I can view each one, and then say when that's been done. I then go back and say, in fact, I'm now gonna get the 2.5 cable. And again, check all the wires there and do that. So it gives you different ways of working, either from clicking on a component We'll see if the door is uh, visible. It's difficult to do that. But if I click on there and turn the door off, if I click on a component, I can then filter the list of wires on the right hand side, or I can place this anywhere I like. Um, and it's a very quick and easy way of making sure you've got everything accounted for and verified. This information is then saved. I can close this down, come back to it, and finish it off later, but back within C Electrical. If I open up the software, if I open up the 3D layout, it 
it's got a bit more information to consider this time so there we go um, the information isn't in there automatically but if I go to file import and you can see the standard graphics can be imported anywhere which is AutoCAD, STL, IGIS and STEP and here we've got 3D shop floor information from the desktop and I can now import that information so bringing it back in has updated the information to say all of these wires if I look at the wiring information when I scroll across to the right I can see that some of these have been mounted and I would expect all of these to be verified as being mounted so that's a confirmation at the end of this um, we can also as you've already seen output drill template information to Perfrix or Steinhauer or just into a list of charts where you can show a list of all the actual drill holes in the settings we can also say I want to show the boundary of all the components as well you can change the size of all the boxes in the text that allows you to see on a gear plate where the component is and what holes need to be drilled and this will reference across to the right to a certain size um, and hole reference and a position from the zero zero point okay so um, a couple of additional things then um, if for instance we've got um, a different disconnect switch maybe something that's got a, a handle on the door that goes via a shaft um, we could say we're going to change this now I can right click and say go to and say jump to the circuit diagram so I could actually make this change back in the circuit diagram if I jump back it's highlighting this one I'm going to double click on it and if I go into DB I can search the parts database for a different one on the right hand side VCF4 I'm going to click on X to delete that and I'm going to search for a different one I'm going to search for a, a VCF3 now I've also got a kit here which is basically a switch a disconnect switch together with the actual uh, handle and with the shaft so if I double click to assign that I've got the three parts in one there in a kit using subtypes and if I go back into the 3d I'll just check it wasn't already open there we go Now I've still got the original switch in there and if I go to my list of components there is a right click option to say highlight in the drawing anything without a, a reference or anything electrical without a reference to the schematic and I can see okay the door handle for some reason is highlighted but here I've got this disconnect switch which isn't in the schematic anymore it's the wrong one so I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to bring it back in by clicking on load from function and that will just refresh that information so I can see here I've got this VCF3 I'm not going to set the entire assembly I'm going to do this manually I'm going to place the disconnect switch now I've forgotten that my active plane at the moment is the door so if I place this you can see it's right on the door which is not where I want it I'm going to go back into the information in the background click on this gear plate to highlight it in the list and say I want the outside of this to be the working plane I'm just going to double click on this and just position it in the background you see it's snap into position now I'm just going to position that in the center make it a bit more uh, pleasing to look at um, I'm then going to go to let's have a look at the shaft I think that's probably the easiest way of doing this now I've got this shaft that's kind of a grayed out I put transparency on this and I can see that as I move over this existing device here I've got a little square which is a, a, a mating plane when I click on that it means it's in exactly the right place so that's now in the right place but I need to put the handle so it appears on the door so I'm going to go back into my Explorer turn on display of the door and say I want to mount things on the outside of it and now I just go back in and I'm going to put the door handle on there now the easy thing to do here because I've got the object snapping on is to move over this position of this device and I can see that it should snap exactly into position so I know 
it's going straight through there. If I turn off the door just to show that, it's in exactly the right place now. So very easy to position things. And importantly, it's attached to the door so that when I create a drill template, it knows exactly where that hole should be to, to put the, uh, the switch on there. So fairly straightforward for putting devices like that together. Um, the last thing we're going to do is just show how we can put together um, a new component just from a, a general um, step file, unintelligent block. So I'm going to come back out. And what I'm going to do is just create a separate 3D panel page just to, to show this example. New page. I'm going to click on OK. So I've now got a new page. And what I'm going to do is take an existing graphic from a manufacturer. Most manufacturers nowadays are producing um, nice 3D drawings, probably too too nice, too detailed for what we really need. But I'm going to go into Explorer and I'm going to go into some imports into Step and I'm going to drag in. No, I know I shouldn't, but I'm going to go for Rittle and I'm going to say I want this panel. So I'm going to simply click and drag. Do I want to create it as a component? Now, I could say yes and then it would be finished, but that's not particularly exciting. So I'm going to say no for the moment. And you can see that's my step file. As I click on it or double click, it's a single object that's been brought in. It's not always the case. It depends how it's been designed. Remember, under File and Import, you also have the option of bringing in AutoCAD, STL, and IGIS format files, or step using this method. But drag and drop is very nice and easy. What I'm going to do on this one is actually just right click. And under Assembly, I'm going to say Explode All Levels. So now it's completely separated into different blocks. So what I'm going to start with doing is actually saying that this and highlight control. I'm just selecting by holding control a group of elements. And I'm going to say, right, these are going to make up my door. So I'm going to right click and choose assembly, create it as a component. And I just want this at the moment to be a mechanical element. It could be an electrical component or it could be a complete cabinet, or it could be a PLC or a relay. So there's a variety of different things, but I'm going to just make this mechanical. I could choose a reference point. I'm going to choose it down here. This is where I'm holding it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm now going to select the main box, and I'm going to do the same thing on there. I'm going to right click, go down to assembly, and say create component. Now this time I can actually choose cabinet to indicate that this is a cabinet. Click on OK. So I've now got two parts to this. Now, before I move anything, it's really useful to be able to put them back in this order if I do tend to move the door away or open it or show any kind of functionality there. So what I'm going to do on the door is add something called a block plane. Now, it's already added one, but what I'm going to do is create one from the surface. So I'm going to hover over here, and it's given me the option of that top surface. Now, I could change that reference point by hitting the space bar and say, no, I want that corner. Or I want it to be facing downwards. So I've got another four options there. And then it goes back to the original. So I'm going to choose that as the point. I'm going to call this one minus door. Now, the mating planes work by having a minus and a plus with the same name. So here, if I select the actual main enclosure, Choose block planes again and create from surface. And if I use the same point, it will be exactly the same for this one. And I call this one plus door. I think I got that right, but if I didn't, I'll find out. So if I now double click, I can move it out of the way. I can see inside the panel. And if I double click, snap it back in is exactly the same place. Now, I did see when I did that, that some other elements are still selected. I'm just going to select the, the back plate, uh, the main enclosure, and I can see that these are now listed in there. So in fact, I've got it selected in the properties. I want to put a description to say this is enclosure so I can see it. Click on the door and say that that's the door. Now I can see those listed in there. I'm going to turn off the enclosure. 
turn it upside down and notice that there are still some elements which I really probably want to have as part of the uh, the door. So I'm going to select everything, hold down control so I deselect this element and then just right click and add those to the block. So now to make this a bit more intelligent, <clears throat> on this one we've already got a top surface. Um, but we can't actually make that active because that's a mechanical surface. So what we're going to do is just add a machining definition so that we can create drill templates. Just going to give that a name. I'll call it door for now. And then add a plane that I want to be able to use. And again, very simply, I could just define this surface. And I'm going to call this one. Got my caps lock on. Uh, I'm going to call it flush mounting minus flush mounting and I'll put a hash so for a comment I'll have an outside one now I could also add another one for the, the back of the door so it's the inside of it but when I close these down I'll notice that the door now has somewhere that I can say make this the working plane so very simply when I go into my list of symbols I can say I want choose a Schneider by type I'm going to choose a control unit And I'm going to choose a push button. And as I move it over this area, if I just click to place it in, I can see it looks as though it's the right height. But if I right click and say, show me the drill template, I can see, yes, it's got that information showing the outline of the component and the drill hole that's needed for that. So in a very short time, I've taken an unintelligent 3D step file. I'm going to hit delete and I've created a an intelligent enclosure which I can start adding things to. I can start putting DIN rail in and mounting my components. If I wanted, I can select just the door and I can choose the modify command, tap R for reference and say I want it from this corner here and I'm now actually going to open this. I'll hit the space bar and say I want it 90 degrees. Good. So I can now look at this with the door open. And as I'm doing that, I can go to a bottom view and actually check there's no collision with anything that's on the door. So I can change the design. I can play with the actual objects. Um, lots of flexibility there and very quick and easy to use. It's quite intuitive the way it works. Um, are there any other questions? I've seen one question so far about the connection points with all properties and machining definitions from one part to another. If we take a symbol that's on the on the drawing, just a push button there, for instance, and if I was to right click and explode it, so effectively stop it being a block, I can actually delete all the graphical elements if I wanted to. So I'm just left with the connection points and the descriptions and even a drill template there. So that's a drill hole. So I could copy that to the same position on another block. And then I've achieved what um, you're asking about uh, Ranjitha. So hopefully that's a, a simple answer to what you're uh, looking for there. Um, if we bring a block in, then under assembly, there is an option here to just add connection points. So when you've got a new symbol in, you simply choose the direction of the connection point and then you place that where you want a connection point to be so assigning connection points is very straightforward um, but if you've already defined it on one I understand it could be easy then to copy it onto other ones are there any other questions is there anything that you'd like to be able to do that you haven't seen yet it's nothing at the moment um, have a think, see if there's anything you want to put in there. What I will show is just how we can document the 3D graphics in a 2D environment, just creating some print views. So I'm just going to close this down for the moment, and save it. I haven't shown this, so I'm just going to go back into the 3D layout. And on this one, I'm just going to take an example of the, of the door to begin with. So I'm going to say in the views, down here at the bottom, I've got a separate panel where I can say define it from a selected object. So I'm going to click on the door, right click and just say this is this is the door. And in fact, I can change the style in which it's displayed. I can show it as wireframe, shaded or rendered. I'll choose rendered. I'm going to right click over the, the actual view and I'm going to choose also in the filtering 
you can choose what information you can display on there. So you can put wires, cables, component attributes, dimensions, and any of the other information that you want to on there. You can also, when you right click, change the settings. And it's important if you want to see this in the 2D environment to say, I want to generate a 2D view. But this can also be used just as a way of switching from one view to another, to a side view, to a front view, and so on. I can change the quality. And because this is a, a, shade, a rendered image, I'm going to choose a high image resolution. I can put the text size a little bit up, so seven millimeters maybe, and put them on a yellow background and maybe top center. And in fact, on any of these, when you go into the filter option, there's an option there to preview and you can see exactly what it is you're going to be displaying in there. Um, if I go back to the standard view, show all, I'm going to turn off the door for the moment. And I'm going to do the same sort of thing for the gear plate. So I'm going to go into define from a selected area and I'm going to choose by clicking the gear plate. So I'm going to right click and choose. Gear plate. And if I don't want to see the actual outside of the uh, enclosure, I can right click and go back to, to filter and say that I don't want to see the actual framework or the roof, the panel, the door's already off. I don't want to see the handle on there and I don't want to see any of those buttons that are on that uh, front device. Uh, the isolator might be useful to see on the front. And I can click on preview just to see what I'm going to view on there. Now I've turned off wires, so it might be useful also to see wires, maybe connection points. And if you put dimensions on there, again, it would be useful to see those. So you can preview what you've got on there. And again, right click under settings, you've got the option of changing the quality and whether it's generated as a, a 2D view. Make that a bit bigger, top center, and I'll make the background a bit clearer a yellow background on there okay so just by changing those if i ch close down the drawing every time you close it you have the option then of generating the 2d views so they'll always be up to date in your 2d environment if i just go to create a new page it could be anywhere in the project 3d views and I'm just going to go to the 3D output command in C Electrical, click on define a 3D view. Now, this could be actually scaled. So you could have it so you put dimensions on here. So you can either fit it to this box that you've drawn, have it an actual size, or you could scale it to whatever scale value you think was going to fit on there. So I'm going to start with just placing the door on there. As I zoom in, uh, it looks as though I had the uh, components in the background. So I've got all those device ideas as well. I need to change that. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here. Place the next one. And put the gear plate there. It's a bit clearer. So it's a good way of documenting what you've got in there, how they're connected. And again, within C Electrical, you have all the options there on how you're going to actually uh, put the wiring information together, the bill of materials, the parts list, terminal lists, and so on. So that's still all available within the software. Hopefully, it's given you an idea of what's possible with the 3D panel package. That's a separate module to the C electrical, which we've got here, and also the, the uh, 3D shop floor module, which allows you to see all the wiring information and verify when it's all been put together and wired. So if there's no further questions, thank you very much for your time. Hopefully you've found it useful. And please get in contact if you want any further information. You can either email us directly at um, in the UK, that's ukige-xao.com, or go onto the website and find your local sales team.